So my name is Abby Maguire and I am running as an independent in the next general election for the Wales and Mendip Hills constituency. So this is Shepton Mallet Prison. It's the oldest prison in the world. Um, it has notorious uh, criminals here, such as the Cray Twins were here, and it also stored the Magna Carta and the Doomsday Book during World War II. I've picked it for two reasons. The first is, is that there is a big parallel between Shepton Mallet Prison and Westminster, and they shut this in 2013 because they realised it was no longer fit for purpose because prisons are now sort of outside of town centres and, and city centres. And um, But yet we still use Westminster, which is falling down, will cost billions to repair um, and decades to restore. Um, so we need to recognise that and, and see that Westminster is no longer fit for purpose. We should probably shut it down and make it a tourist attraction and, and use our parliament building elsewhere, a purpose-built building somewhere else. Um, and my second reason is that I was a police officer, um, so I care very much about justice. And I see a lot of injustice at the moment with things like the post office inquiry and the blood contamination scandal. Um, but also I've worked in homelessness, so I care very much about trauma-informed approach and rehabilitation. So when we're talking about prisons and the prison service, uh, uh, service at the moment we've got like mass um, uh, over, we're oversubscribed in our prisons, there's too many prisoners. And also that probably justice is not being served because people are being released early. So there is a massive problem that needs reform in both our prison service and in our parliament. So that is why I've chosen the prison. So I'm an independent already on Shetland Mallet Town Council and we went in in 2019 with the sole purpose of removing party politics because it was there and it was very destructive and it took a couple of years but we were very successful and throughout that process it made me look more at Parliament and I realised that Parliament was the same. While they were fighting with each other they weren't actually doing anything else so we need to move forward into an environment in Parliament where we are cross-party working and respectful to each other so that we can actually get stuff done positive stuff done in our communities and in our country. So I, I actually take values from all of the political parties. I don't have a problem with the value system of the Conservative, the Labour Party, the Green Party. What I have a problem with is the, the way they conduct themselves um, and the, the way they are in their parties. So actually, in answer to that question, I do take values from all of the political parties. These are big topics. The NHS is obviously a massive topic. Um, it, it, it has, it's been neglected, hasn't it? And it's not fit for purpose as well at the moment. Um, so it needs reforming. We have an aging population and um, we have staff within the NHS who are not being looked after. So therefore that really affects the service that they're delivering. I think when we're talking about the NHS, we just have to face into those problems and then talk to the experts who are giving advice and, and then take that advice and, and move forward with what the NHS is going to look like in the future. Immigration. So when we talk about immigration, both in Parliament and the media, especially the media, we just focus on the small boats, which is actually 30,000 people coming into the country every year. We um, issue 1.4 million visas um, in the UK every year. Um, and that is really affecting what people are feeling because we only have a certain amount of housing, we only have a certain amount of hospitals, education system, et cetera, et cetera. So when we're talking about immigration, we need to be realistic about the government policies that they are pushing with to do with legal migration and not focus on on asylum seekers and then with asylum seekers the, the big topic we can actually just deal with those as asylum seekers and process them in the in the you know in accordance with our own policies which we already have in place So I've door knocked 20,000 people and we are definitely in a cost of living crisis. I door knocked all throughout the winter and so many people answered the door to me in their hat, coat, gloves, scarves. This is how people are living in their properties. Also, we've got working families who now regularly rely on food banks. So we are in a cost of living crisis. It doesn't make any difference how much they say that they're putting into people's pay packet um, through tax relief or whatever. People cannot afford to live um, and house prices as well are going through the roof and um, rental prices are going up. So we need to be, again, we need to lean into that and just acknowledge that, that is an issue. And then again, we can start to find solutions around that.
So I'm glad climate is last because actually when we're talking about all the other issues, then it all feeds into climate, doesn't it? So when we're building houses, that feeds into climate. When we're talking about public transport, that feeds into climate. When we're talking about policies about cars and whether they're diesel or whatnot, that all feeds into the climate. I think we have got really consumed with uh, ticking a net zero box that we have lost the focus of why net zero is there in the first place. And we need to go back to that, the root cause of that. And then we can, again, think about sustainable long-term thinking that resolves some of our climate issues. So again, because I've door knocked so many people, there are so many people across the country, but definitely in this constituency, who do not feel represented. So they say to me, you know, I'm a Labour voter, but there's no point in voting Labour here because they'll never get in, and therefore they don't feel represented. So there is, uh, there is a narrative where people would like on the door to, to move towards a proportional representation system where people, people actually feel like they're represented in Parliament and their views are being represented in Parliament.